Hello again, friends, and today we'll be um, looking at some ways to test your cameras. So a few weeks ago, I picked up this Pentax um, S1A camera to use in a video that's um, coming up probably in the next few weeks. But I was I wanted to be able to use it to take some pictures, obviously, too. The um, video I'm going to make, it's not so important that I take pictures with the camera. It's, the video is more about the camera and a time it was used and why it was used and who used it more so than about the pictures that it takes. But I was kind of curious as to whether or not the um, shutter speeds were accurate. You know, it's like I, I paid, you know, good money for it and had it shipped and it's supposed to work and I would like for it to work. But how do you test that? Well, one relatively easy way to test that is with this little device right here. So this is called a photo plug. And it's, we'll open the box up here and I'll show you what's going on on the inside. So that's our instructions. And here's the device. So let me get it there. And so this plugs into your smartphone. So the headphone jack on your smartphone, or if you have an Apple product, you know, obviously it'll plug into the dongle that then plugs in to your smartphone. And on the other side, it has a, a photo sensitive cell. And I guess the idea is that it reads changes in light and then it kind of converts that to audio waveforms, which then get transmitted back to your um, smartphone app. And then there's an app on the phone that um, you can uh, see the picture wave. And we'll, go, we'll go into it here in a second. You can see the picture wave and then you can adjust the app and determine how quick the, um, you know, how, how far off the settings are for your shutter speeds. Um, so let's set this for side for a second, but you know, so basically what you would do is open this camera up, open the back on it, turn it around, you know, set it kind of right here where the shutter's at, snap a picture. Let's see if we can do this here, you know, and then snap a picture and then it would see the light flash and register that in the app and then you can kind of see how long that light flashed get an idea you know about how whether or not the shutter speeds are accurate of course um an interesting thing about this particular camera is it doesn't work <laughs> so the, like, like most of the time it doesn't work let's see if we can make it not work here so we'll take a picture and see notice that it didn't actually fire and see that the, the um, curtain still open so, and getting it to do its thing. You can wind it again, and then this time up, oh, it worked. This time, not so much. <laughs> so, um, so there you go. So I didn't actually have to test this one. It, was, it, it became pretty obvious that it's not actually going to work for taking photos, but that's okay. Still a cool looking camera, and I can still use it for my video. But, so what I thought I would do is test some of these others. So we have a, um, you know, just a Kodak folding camera. I just bought this like three weeks ago at a flea market for $20. So we'll see if it, you know, we'll see if it even fires, which I, I believe it does. The, um, I've, I've tested it a little bit and it fires, I, but we'll see how it does with the testing. Um, and then we have this uh, Petri, I guess that's how you say that. Petri rangefinder camera. Um, I've had it for a while, but I don't think it works either. I think the um, shutter sticks on it, so we'll find out when we take a picture of that or when we test it. And then here we have the old standby. And of course, then our um, other camera is a Bronica, a Zenza Bronica ETRSI. This is like one of my favorite cameras. I've had it for forever and a day. I actually paid more for the hand grip than I paid for the whole camera. So <laughs> that, that's um, because she gives some idea about how long I've had the camera. But it does, I know that it does pretty well. I've taken many rolls with it. So we'll put it through the paces also. So I'm going to step away here for just a moment and set up the, um, set up my um, iPhone with the app and with the device and put the camera in place and then kind of show you how we'd go about testing the um, speeds. Okay, so here we're back and um, let's take a look at the app 
uh, before we move on. So as you can see here, the app is called Shutter Speed and you touch it, start it up, and you just, it looks like you have a big dial here, but that's just a picture. And so um, at the top, you have the take a measurement, which we'll do in a moment, which you'll see me do. And then at the bottom, you have your camera manager and that lists your cameras. Um, so you can see I've set up a few of my cameras here and then inside of the camera, you can see, you know, where your targets are at based on the measurements you've made for those cameras. And some idea and we'll go through i'll show you how i do these on some different cameras here in a moment but that's kind of the um the major gist here of it so once you've added your camera then you go to the take a measurement portion and you have this aperture bit here and so basically you hit record button and wait for it to finish take your picture wait for it to finish and then see you get this kind of waveform um, this one here looks really wacky because I didn't have the photo plug plugged in. It's just, you know, audio from the microphone. But as you can see, you have these. And so the idea being is that you find where your, um, or the light has changed the, um, changed the form here and then set the beginning and the end. And you'll see deviation from the selected time. It'll tell you how long, how many stops off it is. And so that's just kind of like an overview of the app. It's really simple, straightforward. Um, but so let me go ahead and set everything up. Okay, so our first camera set up here is the Bronica ETRSI. Now what I like to do is put a light source in front of the camera, as you can see here, shining through the lens. And then I have the um, aperture set to F 2.8. I found that it doesn't really matter. You can set it large or small um, and you get about the same readings. The thing that actually kind of matters the most on the readings is the light temperature. So I have this turned down to um, 33K, I believe that's right. Yeah, or 33,300K. 3, and, um, but now of course, you know, you can turn your, and it's at 100% power. But now the, um, if you set it up to like, was it 5,500K 5, or 5,600K, sorry. For the white light, it doesn't do as well as it does with the um, um, lower temperature light. So that's where I set it at and I found that the brightness, you know, like 20% power versus 100% power doesn't really seem to matter. It's the color of the light that seems to matter the best. So we've got this set, got the app open. So I'm gonna go to take a measurement. Um, let's see, make sure that the camera's cocked. And so we've selected a speed of 125th a second. Um, oh. On this particular camera, in order to get it to work, you have to have it set for multiple exposure and for mirror lockup. And then that way the multiple exposure lets you take a um, fire to the shutter while the um, film backs off. And then the mirror lockup lets you put the uh, probe inside of the camera. And so basically what I do is I hold the probe in as best I can, hit the record, while it's doing its record, fire the shutter, and then hit stop. Okay, and then so when it's done, you wind up with a waveform, and this one has like a little thing at the beginning. Usually ignore that because I know that it took me a second or two to get to the, um, you know, to the shutter and actually fire it. And so you'll notice, see it just has, so it just has like just the two. Let me zoom out here so you maybe can see, hope you can see at least. So it just kind of has that one and that and that bump there. And so what I want to do is zoom in on this bump because that's kind of where I took the picture. And then I want to put the back on the back and the front on the front. And I had the camera set for 125th of a second, which is kind of a, a downfall for this application. So it doesn't have any settings for 125th, either new or so it has these um, shutter speeds of new and old, but the Bronica uses the old settings. So, you know, if I wanted to do one fifth, I'd have to do that. But, you know, it's got the new, see, that it doesn't have on new a one fifth. So um, if I want to do one twenty fifth, I have to tell it it's new, do done. And then it'll kind of tell me, oh, it's, you know, it's pretty close to home because it's like 112th of a second and I had set for one twenty fifth. Um, and that's really kind of a weird downfall of this camera. I don't know why they made that choice of saying, okay, or am I doing new style or old style of 
shutter speeds. Just, you know, just have shutter speeds and let us select if you're not going to do it with the dial from the main thing. And so um, once I'm done, you hit save and you find your camera on your list, hit save and hit save. And then see when I set this camera up, I told it it had old shutter speed values. And, but see, I've told this, this is a new, so I can't save this setting. So I have to go in here, change that to old, and then select the wrong speed because they don't have 125th on the list. And now I can save to the camera, but it thinks it's, you know, a little bit off. So, eh, you know, it's just kind of one of those things. And it's kind of one of the drawbacks I um, about this particular app. It has some weird quirks kind of around um, selecting the shutter speeds and then kind of around um, setting your camera and that kind of thing up. And then obviously also this whole deal with, you know, trying to find this waveform because as you zoom in, so you can see the beginning and end best, you don't get a good idea of what the valley is and you can't zoom in a way that you can see everything. And it doesn't support, you know, portrait mode either. In this, in, um, this view, it only supports landscape. So that's kind of, um, yeah, it's, it's, it is what it is, right? Because it's, you know, hasn't been updated in a while. So that's kind of how I would do one with the Bronica. Um, let's do another one here while we're at it. So let's change it to, oh, what do we got here? Let's change it to 60th of a second. So we go in here and set, so we only have a 50th. Back to record a new, set it down. Set everything up. Okay, hit record. Picture. Hit stop. And we can come back here. And here is where we took the snap. And see, it's, you know, 59.7 seconds or one over 59.7 seconds is 160 so it's right on the money but because we don't have 160th as a shutter speed it thinks that we're a third off so you know and that's like I say again that's just kind of the thing with this particular um, application and so we save that and go about our business i'll tell you what i'm going to take a break here and change cameras and we'll test one of the other cameras here real quick. Okay, so now we're back and I've got the um, Kodak folding thing. What is this thing? Uh, Vigilant 6-20, and it's the word six, S-I-X. So I don't really know anything about this camera. I was at a flea market, guy was asking $20 for it, I offered him 10, he said he'd take 12. And so now it's mine. Uh, so, so let's just see how it does. I have it set for um, 25th, yeah, 25th of a second, and it's cocked. So again, we put the probe in, hit the record, hit the shutter speed, hit the stop. I think this one's a little different here, but we got it going there. So there's the where I took the actual picture, or took fired the shutter. I keep saying took the picture because, you know, I'm old. And um, let's select our speed, 125th. And hey, it says it's one over 21 of a second instead of one over 25. So it's like, you know, pretty close on. And so we'll save that to this camera. And we'll go back to done. I'll tell you what, let's do another one just to see if it's how it does over other, other um, shutter speeds. Let's set it here to so it's one over a hundred. And let's see, cock the film, or cock the shutter. Put the probe in, we hit record, shutter, stop. And here we are. I'm doing my very best to show this, but it's hard to see on camera. Move the stop and the start to there. And 
I, <laughs> one over 51 of a second for one over 100. So it's like three stops or, or three third stops. So it's a whole stop off at that speed, which I, you know, it's good to know. Um, I think you'd probably be okay, you know, if you were using not expired film in it and you weren't using, um, oh, what am I trying to say here? If you weren't using like a, a chrome film, like a um, positive, because you don't have a whole lot of latitude there. But, you know, with a normal black and white film, you probably would be all right just by going by what it says. So um, we'll save that measurement back to this camera and we're done. So that's, um, so that's it in a nutshell. That's kind of how it works. You set it up and you... Uh, pretend to take a photo, you fire the shutter with the um, photo cell watching and record your times. What are our thoughts on the um, photo plug? I think it's a good idea. And I think that if you're not like really super concerned with, you know, um, accuracy, <laughs> I mean, why would you be, right? Then, you know, and you've got 50 bucks burning a hole in your pocket, then yeah, sure, go out and buy one. Don't expect to, um, you know, to get accurate readings out of it. It's very, it's a very manual process and a very, um, oh, I don't know, it's a very kind of fuzzy way they're doing it. So it's not going to give you like 100% precise readings, but I think it would be pretty good to, you know, say you picked up an old camera somewhere and you're just kind of curious about, well, how, how good is it? How, you know, I, I can tell that the shutter fires, but you know, how accurate is it? You can get an idea of how accurate the shutter might be with this. And again, like I said, it's only like 50 bucks plus, you know, shipping. So, um, and the folks that make this thing have no idea I'm making this. So I will put a link to the um, uh, website where I bought it in the description and you can go check one out and see for yourself. Let me know what you think in the, um, you know, with the comment. I mean, if you've used one, if I did it wrong, you know, what do you think about it? Um, I will say this: it's clear that the um, application is what I would consider abandoned wear. You know, the controls and the look and everything about the way that this application was written says that it was written at least eight years ago and that it hasn't really been upgraded much since, or it was written by someone who was um, a beginner, which there's nothing wrong with, you know, having a, uh, nothing wrong with that per se, but it just means that it hasn't been updated much and it has um, several issues with it. So you'd have to be prepared to deal with the quirkiness of the application. I wouldn't necessarily um, also care about, you know, worry too much about the deviations numbers unless you have a time and you know unless it knows a shutter speed that's on your camera because like some of my cameras had shutter speeds that they just didn't have values for so that's that's a little bit of a weirdness about it i guess um so that's kind of the things i think about it you know i would if i was writing this in the iphone store i'd give it like i don't know two and a half stars out of five you know, it's kind of one of those things like you need to know what you're getting into before you buy it. But if it's something that you're interested in, you'll be interested in it. So that's, um, that's kind of what I think about it. I appreciate you taking the time to um, watch the video if you made it this far. And if you'd like, comment, subscribe, you know, feed the logarithm if, if you would. I'd really appreciate that. And until next time, later days, everybody.